We're going to move our discussion now from forces, motions, momentums into electrostatics. Again, we are going to be talking about a force, but uh, we'll be talking about electrostatics and charges and things like that. Now, one of the things, and I don't know how easily you're going to be able to see it, but if you want, you can go ahead and do this at home. I have a couple pieces of tape, and I folded one end over the other and I stuck it down. So kind of have this tape here and I, I kind of folded a portion of the two sticky sides together so I had a little tab that I could hold. So I'm going to take two of those pieces of tape and I'm going to stick them down on a surface. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually rip each one off and when I go ahead and I try bringing them close together, I don't know how easily you can see this, but the one in this hand actually isn't wanting to go towards it. What it's actually doing is it was actually pushing towards my hand and now it's actually stuck to my thumb right here. <laughs> But the thing is, like I said, if you do it at home, or you could kind of see it uh, on my video, you saw that the tape didn't want to come together. The tape repelled one another. And basically the reason why it was repelling one another was I had it stuck down on the surface, or both of them stuck on a surface, and when I ripped it up, it basically was taking a charge from the surface each one taking the same type of charge. And electrostatics is going to be the study of properties and the results of charges at rest. So when I had the tape, the tape itself was neutral. Uh, when the surface I stuck it on was neutral. But the minute I removed the tape, what it did is it stripped some of the charges away from that surface. Technically stripped the same charge away. Electrostatics also studies those charges that are gained or lost. Knowing that charges can be transferred, charges can never be created nor destroyed. They are transferred from one object to the other. If you remember back in chemistry when we talked, we talked about equal protons and equal electrons. So when we talk electrostatics, again, everything starts out neutral with the same number of opposite charges. But when we disturb that imbalance, when we change the balance of the charges, that's when electrostatics is going to end up occurring. There are two types of charges. They were studied by Benjamin Franklin, and of course those two types of charges are both positive and negative. The law of electric charge just states that, like charges, they're going to repel one another. That's why those two pieces of tape ended up repelling one another. Unlike charges, unlike charges are going to end up attracting one another thing that you're also going to find out is any charged object will attract to a neutral object and the reason being is because of that movement of those charges. So I've got some YouTube videos that have some demos associated with it. Okay, the first video here that's going to be looking at a Van de Graaff generator. It basically produces a charge and we have 94 little pie or aluminum pie plates. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play here. We're going to put 94 aluminum pans on a Van de Graaff. Because that's normal. Enjoy. basically you got this moving piece inside the Van de Graaff. You can see the little blue sparks there. Each one's going to be a charge that's being sent up to that top of that Van de Graaff generator. And one by one you see the aluminum plates coming off of the Van de Graaff generator. The other one here is going to be a fur on top of a Van de Graaff generator. Again, the fur is going to be neutral, and when we go ahead and we look at that Van de Graaff generator, it's going to be a charged uh, object that's going to be transferring those charges to each little hair follicle on this fur. I like to spread out. So where they spread out to, some of them, since they're touching, they'll jump onto the fur. Now, that makes the fur negative. It also makes the Van de Graaff negative. So you can see they start to repel. And eventually, whoop, down goes the money. Okay? So again, you can see uh, when all of those charges developed, each fur 
or hair follicle got the same type of charge it was trying to repel eventually left the Van de Graaff generator. So when you looked at that demo, the Van de Graaff generator was producing a charge. It was producing the same type of charge that transferred to each aluminum pie plate. Each aluminum pie plate got the same type of charge, therefore you saw like charges repel. Same thing with the fur. As the Van de Graaff generator sent out the charges, each uh, hair follicle on the fur ended up getting the same type of charge. As it got that same type of charge, the hairs were standing up and of course causing it to eventually jump off of the Van de Graaff generator. Maybe you have seen people that have touched their hand on top of the Van de Graaff generator and their hair sticks out. Again, each one is getting that same type of charge causing it to end up repelling. Robert Milliken, this goes back to your chemistry days. If you remember what he did, he did the oil drop experiment where he found out the charge on a single electron. The value of that charge on an electron is a negative because it is electrons, negative 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Now, as we talk about charges, okay, there's going to be two things that we need to look at. And those two things, first one being conductors. Okay, I know I'm jumping down here, but a conductor is going to be anything that moves charges. Since we're talking about electricity, we'll say charges. But if you want, we can say energy moves temperature, moves heat, things like that. But it's any material that allows charges to flow or move freely from, say, point A to point B. Any metal. Now, some metals are better than others. Houses are wired with copper. Copper is kind of cheap. But it's a lot cheaper than silver. Silver's better. But again, basically any metal will move charges. Now, if we don't want charges to move, those are going to be insulators. Insulators are any material that do not allow charges to flow easily. So here's a charge at A. It doesn't get to point B. Good uh, insulators are going to be plastics, rubber, glass. Air is technically a good insulator and things like that. Now, there's going to be two different ways that we can charge objects. The first one is going to be charging by conduction. This is literally going to be when the object is charged because it is touched. Think about this. You scuff your feet across carpet. As you scuff your feet across carpet, you're transferring that charge from the carpet to your feet or to yourself. And eventually when you touch that doorknob, uh, you're going to get that shock. And then there's charging by induction. This is going to be when an object is charged by being close to another charged object okay this is how lightning occurs because you've got the earth which is neutral you've got the cloud that clouds that have all of those charges when lightning occurs it's because of that charging by induction the clouds and the clouds and the earth aren't touching they're close enough that the excess buildup of charge causes that charge to occur so conduction or charging by conduction is when the particles literally touch Charging by induction is when they're brought close and near.